Unfortunately, I lost a giant, which you'll see right here. I'm gonna pop it right in front of my face. You looking at it? Stop it. She got it. Oh! She ain't had it. She had it. Oh, she's looking at it now. She got it. Oh, she did have it. Oh my God, I can't believe it, dude. I'm fucking shaking, bro. She's getting mad. I can still see her where she is. All right guys, so let me give you a little bit of explaining. I haven't really explained a lot in my videos what I was doing lately, especially with the bed fishing or anything like that. And really and truly, you know, it wasn't even on the bed. It was just sitting there guarding a fry, but it would not leave. And I threw at it probably, I don't know, over a hundred times at least. She swung at this little live target bluegill, little three inch bait like that. She hit it twice and this is what you see in the video. But unfortunately my camera died and I missed hooking up on it. I hooked on it for about five seconds. She never come out the water. She just swung her head around and the hook came out. So I didn't have the right gear with me. I had my crankbait rod and it's just too flimsy to set the hook really hard on it. I swung as hard as I could. It just didn't happen for me. But uh, eventually it will, I know that. So I threw this right here, this little it looks like a little pumpkin seed, little swim bait like this. And this is the one that really got her fired up. It's got a little orange belly on it like that. It really, really got her fired up. She come running across the grass trying to eat it. I seen her big old mouth like that. Big old, big old fish. Just couldn't make it happen. You know, you always learn from your mistakes more than you do from your successes. At least that's what I believe. And I know I'm gonna get another shot. I'm gonna be going out to City Park a lot because I know they're still spawning and they're gonna have new batches come here and there. It just depends on what you're gonna do. I learned a lot from fishing out there, just from doing, just from looking around and seeing how the fish react to stuff. And wasting a lot of time on the big fish that's not really locked onto their beds. They'll swim all around, swim all around, but they won't stay on that bed or they won't even get close to the bed. These are the two baits. I got her to hook up on. Well, actually, I got her to bite, which I thought it would be this one. And a little thing about this, too, is another thing about this little live target, it, ten it tends not to, like, the hook does not want to come out. It would be good to put a bottom treble hook on here, but that's just my little thoughts on that. I'm going to start off from the past videos, if you've been watching the Bass Quest or anything like that. What I started using was a fluke. This is a Zoom Swimming Fluke Junior. It is the white ice. And this is, I had this Texas rigged and I would just sit there and I'd just shake it on a bed or I'd bounce it or I'd try to hit them in the face with it. Depends on how aggressive they were. Just trying to feel them out and see what was going on with it. This was one of the baits when I first started doing it that was working really well for me. But I kind of shot away from it and I'm going to show you why. The other bait that I used a lot, I put this Dean Rojas Warmouth and they could not stand it. I probably caught more fish on the bed with this than any other bait I had. So this was a killer. I mean, it looks just like a little bluegill. And then what happens is when you put it on a little shaky head and you shake them, that, that tail just goes nuts. Another little tip for y'all, which is something I read and I also got told by somebody, there's, also, there's, a, there's a flat that's on the inside of here and you can take a little piece of Alka-Seltzer and it looks like a little bubble trail going up in there and it looks like they're digging in the bed and that'll drive a big one nuts from what I've read. I haven't tried it yet but it seems like a very good idea. The other bait that I used, I actually got told by somebody in City Park to use this white lizard. So I bought this from uh, most of these baits I buy for Barataria Bait and Tackle off of Barataria. It's a great little bait shop. They have a lot of stuff. Austin, he'll hook you up on anything you want to know. Anything you need to get, he's going to point you in the right direction. So if y'all going to go somewhere, make sure you go to Barrett Tire Bait and Tackle. Support your local businesses. Those are the ones that's going to give you all the insight of what's going on around you and everything else. This right here, this lizard, did pretty okay. It was more, you know, me hitting it in the face. I just caught this 163. I had the damn thing on camera mode, so didn't get it on film. But I got a big one on the bed. I don't know how big it is. I don't think it's big enough for the uh, bass quest, but we'll see. Looks like a four pounder. With the fish and them biting it. It didn't seem too interesting. I don't know. It worked pretty good uh, as far as, you know, 
you just gotta find what's gonna make that one bass tick. That one bass might not want this lizard, might want this, or might want the next bait that we're gonna talk about. The next bait that we're gonna talk about is the, the Kinky Beaver, and the name of it is the Dirty Sanchez. So, but it's got like a little bit of green pumpkin and uh, chartreuse with some black flake in it. So, this right here, it's, you know, pretty good little bait. I actually got hooked up on this bait by James Helmer. He told me about this bait, and he was like, Doug, you need to use this bait. So, I started throwing it. I caught a two and a half pounder the other day, and that's what you're gonna see right here. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Good one. There we go. I'm starting to wonder if they even had bass in here anymore. God, he ate that one. Sweetness. Fat little monster. All messed up, dude. This thing is got stuff everywhere on him. Get a little weight on him real quick. Just for shits and giggles. I'd say probably about two, three. Two, five, six. Good fish. See you later, baby. And then unfortunately, I probably had a real good fish. I don't know how big it was because obviously you see in the video that it just completely blew up whenever I went to set the hook. Oh! Snapped the line and broke the fucking pole. What have we learned? Not to buy a Powell Inferno, which is crazy. This Powell's a good brand, but as you can see, that and that was a fucking good fish too. That was a real good fish. I felt the weight from it and it just snapped. Fantastic. So this was the bait I was using. This is the bait I've been using for a little bit now. I actually have a bass tournament tomorrow, so that's the next thing that you're going to see. No matter what happens in the tournament, I'm still going to record stuff. Alright guys, I hope y'all liked the video. Make sure to subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, and I'm going to check y'all on the next one. Later.